Um, first of all, let's talk about the first cluster. We have the Six of Wands and the Princess of Sword. Um, this is your public image. There's a lot of success financially. There's a lot of, I feel like for a lot of you, you work very hard to get where you are and at a point in your life where you're basically at the apex when it comes to like getting the right accolades, getting the reception, the very, very positive reception being sought for for your skills and expertise. Now, the Six of Wands indicates major victory. And this is a victory where, you know, you can be in the public eye. You're getting a lot of fame and recognition. It doesn't indicate financial success, though. Okay, so think about that and think about how that relates to in the, the initial message that I brought up, which is that you have to think about your attachments with money. Money doesn't always equal success. And I feel for some of you, you're starting to come to this realization that, you know, it is a means to an end and not an end in itself. So in the process of going through life, just seeking financial security and an abundance, you're not going to be happy. So this is a card about long term success. And it's linked up here with the page of swords. The page of swords is about the whole process of accumulating knowledge of knowing areas in ourselves that we are lacking so that we can learn so that we can enhance ourselves our knowledge base, so that we can fill in those things that we feel we are lacking okay so for example if you're more of a english you know uh, liberal arts inclined person and you feel that you know your accounting skills your math skills are not that great you might want to take a few courses to brush up on you know um, i don't know trigonometry calculus or something like that so this is a card about strategy it's basically looking at areas in our lives um, knowledge base. It, it deals more with mental processes, communication, and things like that. Looking at areas that we might be intellectually lacking and trying to uh, our best to make ourselves more well-rounded because we are starting to see that in terms of creating success for ourselves, we have a lot of skill, uh, a lot of skills, a lot of assets. We also have things that we might be lacking that might hinder our um, achievement of success. So. It's basically telling you that for this month, the energy where you are thinking about long-term success, you are, you are doing some type of planning in order to achieve that, sol that solid success for the long term for, you know, to maintain yourself in this situation. It's going to be very um, beneficial for you. Okay. So it's also like doing some type of coursework or upgrading your skills and you're basically planning things out long term so that you can achieve this ultimate success. Okay. It's a very good energy and it's headed in the positive direction. The next two cards basically deals with areas in our lives where we are um, being on guard about. All right. So the nine of wands is a card about vigilance. This is a card about uh, perseverance. You've got uh, you've been through a lot. And I feel for a lot of you, I, I do sense that. Um, I, I do feel some type of uh, long standing battle. It's almost over, okay? So this is the nine. When we get to the 10, it's pretty much the end of the cycle. This is like you're on that very last leg of the journey and you're almost there. So it's telling you to persevere, push through it, don't give up. In the traditional Rider weight deck, it's a card about vigilance where you're taking a repose away from fighting uh, so that you can recuperate your strength so that you can, you know, fight another day. But it's telling you that don't give up yet. You're almost on top of that hill and you're going to reap the benefits, okay? So don't uh, give up on anything. Don't sell yourself short and especially uh, fight through it. It is worth fighting for. What's linked up with it is the lovers and the lovers is a romantic relationship. So there is something significant in your life right now. Um, a person that you have a very strong physical connection with. And this is telling you that, you know, push through it. A lot of the times um, when it comes to physical attraction, when it comes to having a very strong uh, emotional connection with somebody, it's it stems from a soul connection. And it basically brings people together where two people, they might be geographically distant, um, um, separated. They might be constrained by, you know, just geography. They might be con constrained by the, the, the things in their lives that make them very different. 
And there might be interference as well from other people. So if you're, you've been in some type of a relationship where you feel very, very, you feel a, a sense of camaraderie with another person, but there has been a lot of life challenges or a lot of interference coming through from another person that's preventing the relationship from stabilizing. It's telling you, don't give up on it. You know, persevere, figure out, like, um, plan some strategy, figure out how you can make this work so that you can achieve the love and the relationship that you want, all right? The next cluster we're dealing with, once again, is a blast from the past. We do have Mercury in retrograde. I believe it is starting on the um, 28th of this month, but the shadow period lasts about a week and a half before that. So it's um, usually when Mercury in retrograde happens, it's basically a gateway for the past to come back so that we can re-examine it so that we can overcome or we can learn the lessons and move on or we can fix things that we didn't have the knowledge and the skills to fix and to stabilize the first time okay so you have the six of cups which indicates a very very strong soul connection with another person we have the lovers here as well as the six of cups which indicates to me this is going to be a very very um relationship oriented type of month now the uh, lovers card is also a card about uh, decision choices it's also about you know um do i pursue the person i love even though they're they might not be stable or do i pursue somebody who is more stable even though i don't have the same type of soul connection the same types of love so you have some major major decisions here i do feel that it is linked up with do I want, to, it's linked up with like love and success. Which direction do you want to go? All right. So once again, coming back to that whole first initial message about money and things like that, I do feel that a lot of the relationships um, that have happened in your life might, I, I feel like you're coming to the point where you feel that they might have been affected by your work. And I feel like they might have been negatively affected by your work or you are letting your work affect your relationships, like interpersonal relationships. So this is something to think about, really think about for this month and to really think about what is the end goal here? What is it that you're hoping to achieve and what is it that's going to bring you emotional and spiritual fulfillment so that you can head in the right direction? All right. And. I feel that there is some strategy that needs to be laid out. Have a game plan because one does not, you know, occur at the expense, doesn't have to occur at the expense of the other. So you can achieve them both. It just requires strategy. All right. So once again, oh, we do have this blast from the past. You have somebody coming back into your life. It is linked up here with Queen of Swords, which is an air sign. Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. This is a very, very strong spiritual connection. There is a lot of interference. So um, in this deck, you can see there is a figure in the back. You also have the lover's card, which also indicates what external influences um, hindering the progress of a significant relationship. So there is somebody in your life. She or he can be an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. This is somebody who's very logical, who's very cerebral, somebody who is a great strategist. They might seem a little bit unwieldy and like um, it seems it seems as if when you interact with them, you know, because you're a water sign, um, you're dealing with an air sign and air signs are not very uh, expressive and affectionate when it comes to their emotions. It takes a lot of trust. It takes a lot of like um, familiarity for them to open themselves up, for them to give you, you know, um, the affection, the warmth that you're you're looking for. So I feel that there might have been warmth and love and affection uh, missing in this relationship but I feel like on a soul level you know that they do care about you a lot you know there's this is a very strong karmic bond as well so I do feel something is being brought up for re-examination possibly even a retry or a, a go around like a do-over um, so just you know look at this situation and think about if it's worth it for you because I feel like it can be very good uh, for you I feel like this person is in your life for you to, um, to force you to think about um, honestly to think about strategy okay this is more about planning long term having a game plan they are also somebody who gives very very good advice this is somebody who's been through a lot 
And they know about life's challenges. They know about human nature. And they're very good at giving you solid, practical advice without strings attached, without, you know, um, swaying a situation in their favor. They just do, they do want to give you solid, concrete advice, okay? So take their advice to heart. And I feel that it's going to be very beneficial for you. And they can give you very good advice as well. On the love front, um, I do sense because you're a water sign, you're interacting with this energy. This energy is telling you more to think with your head and to also be very, very firm and logical and, you know, resolute and stick with it. So it's not all about talking. It's about, you know, sticking to it and um, executing your plans, okay? Um, because what's coming in next here, we do have the alchemist, which is the magician, and the eight of pentacles. The magician is somebody who is very, very intelligent. So I feel like this is the, um, once again, it's the whole strategy, having a game plan, thinking about the next phase in your life, and not just thinking about it, um, just, you know, in the short run, but thinking about long term, what it is that you're trying to achieve, how you're going to get there, what's the smartest way to get there. This is a card that deals with potential and it deals with intelligence. It deals with craftiness. It deals with basically being resourceful. So at this point, it's telling you, Cancers, you have everything that you need in your life to create the future that you want. You don't have to be bound to the past. You don't have to like struggle for money. You don't have to, um, whatever negative like um, associations that you have about, you know, am I good enough for this person? Am I good enough for this job? Am I smart enough? Um, do I have like what it takes to do this job and do it well? Can I get, land that promotion? All of these things that you're thinking about when it comes to your public image, when it comes to the life that you want to create, when it comes to the career track, all of these questions are coming back up. And it's basically telling you, you do have all the skills that you need. Okay. There might be areas, you know, we are all humans. We can't be the jack of all trades, but there might be areas that you're lacking. And going back to school would be very beneficial for you when this card shows up. It's basically reassessing everything that we, we have and trying to upgrade our skills and trying to figure out areas that we might be lacking so that we can fill in those gaps, knowledge gaps, etc. It is also linked up here with the um, Eight of Pentacles. The Eight of Pentacles is a card about working very, very diligently. Um, it's a card of monotony. It's a card about working very, very hard. And um, you have this sense of stick to itiveness. That is very good, but at the same time, you're building a way, like you're you're spending your time building this. All, all of these things and everything is done in a very systematic mar manner and it's linked up with the magician so it's telling you are you happy with the monotony of this job or do you want to be in a managerial position and of course everyone is going to say you know of course they don't want to slave away they do want more of a uh, middle management top management type of position because there's money involved however so take the money out of this take the prestige the money out of this situation and just think about how can you get here to here what are some of the shortcuts or what are some of the, the things that you need to do to get there? And I feel like because both of these cards are coming out together, there might be temptation for you to cut corners in what you're doing. There might be that temptation. So try to curb that temptation, okay? Um, it's also telling you that a greatness achievement comes at the expense of hard work, diligence, and that sense of stick to itiveness. So I do feel for those of you who are trying to make your mark in the world to become like the alchemist, you are going to have to put in the initial hard work in order for you to achieve the rec to get the recognition to gain the achievement that you're hoping for. At the same time, it's telling you as well to work smart and think things out plan things out long term so that you can achieve the life that you want, okay? It's a little bit of a mixed bag, so I feel like I'm talking to two people. There are the ones that have achieved a lot of, um, I feel like you, you've, you've achieved a lot of greatness in life, and at this point, you're kind of like on top of the heap, and you're going out and you're trying to find um, emotional fulfillment, which is great. And there are 
others of you who might have had relationships that were very, very beneficial, but for some reason you might have forgo them in order to go out and devote your time to money to, um, to achieve like success in the outer world. So finding a middle ground is going to be something very important for you. And just know that you can have it all. One thing does not have to exist at the expense of something else. Learn to be a little bit more holistic. And I feel like, you know, incorporating, um, having a strategy, having a game plan and things like that would be very beneficial for you. For those of you thinking about returning to school, it is prime time. So, you know, start your applications. It's, um, you're heavily supported here. Okay. Now let's look at the advice position. And, um, <clears throat> first of all, the advice and the, the theme for you to focus on, and we have a lot of cups energy, is the Ten of Pentacles, uh, I'm sorry, the Ten of Cups, which deals with the apex of human emotional experience. So this is like a, a very, very positive card. It deals with like family completion. It deals with um, a state of being, of feeling and being very elated and very joyful, optimistic and happy with life. So I feel like, you know, it's linked up with your success, but more than anything, it's not the success. The success is internal. The success is basically about, you know, um, knowing what we're worth, what we're capable of, and having other people recognize that in us. There's a lot of pride coming through for a lot of you in the public um, eye. So you're also feeling very good about yourself, and you're in a position where others are looking up to you. You're also getting a lot of recognition from the people that you love. And I know with cancers, it's not just the public recognition. It's mainly being looked up to by the people that you love that really matters to you. And, you know, your your home and your heart and the hearth of the home, That's those are things that are very special to you. So I feel like for those of you who are uh, have achieved a lot of success in the world, you're at a point right now where you are looking for love and it's telling you to steer in this direction. The advice cards are basically telling you the direction that you should be headed. And this is basically get back to the rudimentary, which is the family unit, the uh, social connections, emotional connections that you have with the people that you love, that you care for, that you consider family. They're the ones that are going to give you very, very solid advice. And they're the ones that are going to appreciate you and pick you up when you're down and they're going to accept you no matter what okay um in terms of um other advice coming through we do have a little bit of a scattered energy we do have a lot of temptation coming through as well you have a person coming back from the past you might have somebody who is very very high status that you are looking up to right now. So I feel for a lot of you, there might be temptations when it comes to the work environment and especially when it comes to uh, love relationships. Okay. So we have somebody that is potentially a, a very, very um, high power, like um, they're in the public environment. You might look up to them. You might like, um, I feel you very en enamored and smitten by somebody in a status of, uh, in a position of power, which you want to really re-examine if the the affection, if the admiration you feel for them is because of their position, because of their status, because you look up to them, or if there is a strong, you know, emotional connection. And it's the cards are telling you to go with the strong emotional connection because that's going to last a lifetime. Whereas, you know, the status, the prestige, the veneer, the glamour is not going to last when you have jarring emotional or you know just habitual like differences okay so think about that so the seven of uh, cups deals with temptation it deals with scatter energy and it deals with looking at life through like um through rose tinted glasses as, as well but looking at all the possibilities so a lot of doors are opening up in your life you have like i, I mentioned you have opportunities for greatness for uh, possibly even returning to school it's a matter of right now like you're kind of like on that threshold where you're trying to decide what you're planning to do for the next few years of your life so you're made hitting major decision points and i do feel at this point you have a lot of possibilities opening up so you know it's important to choose wisely but this is a, a very, very optimistic card. And the other advice coming through is think about the family. Think about the, your upbringing. Think about the values that you were um, 
cultivating or the, the values that were transmitted to you from the family unit and don't do things that are dishonorable. Okay, this is a, a card about um, gaining at somebody else's expense. And a lot of the times, you know, it can play out in mundane ways, such as um, such as dating somebody or being interested in somebody who is um, in another relationship, for example, we want that person because you know, we can't have that person, for example, it can play out in a way where um, I guess, you know, like in, in a more negative way where you're doing something you're not supposed to and because you, and you do it because you know that you won't get caught. So it can be insidious in that regards. But the, the point here is you have many, many temptations. You have many opportunities. So just make sure that you follow your values, family values. You follow your conscience, that moral compass that's guiding you. That's going to take you uh, a long way, okay? So that's those are the messages that I'm sending uh, I'm seeing for you and I do feel that um there is a, a person definitely air sign Aquarius Gemini Libra coming back through that can provide a lot of insights for you they're giving you a lot of uh, a, a lot of food for thought is what I'm sensing I see you mulling it over and I see that your world is enhanced by the options that they're giving you okay um, there is also indication here of hard work for the next two years, but you're going to really enjoy it. So if you are at a gateway and you have all these options lined up and you have, you know, options for instant gain, that might be risky, or you have options for diligent work, hard work within the next two years, um, Go for the, the ones that require hard work because I feel like it seems like hard work right now and it seems like, you know, two years. That's such a long time. But I feel that there are going to be very amazing surprises thrown in the mix for you that will make you quite happy is what I'm sensing because we have... I, I feel like you've thought things out very clearly. You have some good advice. And at this point in your life... um you're going to be okay. But I feel like there are a lot of good surprises in store for you. If you choose the route that talks about, you know, hard work paying off really, really wonderfully, there are going to, it seems like, you know, two, three years is a long time, but along the way, the universe is going to constantly give you signals that you're on the right path by throwing very pleasant surprises in your, in your way. Okay. As long as you're willing to work hard for it.